So as I begin pattern Vogue 8280, this is the design that I've chosen, F. And I already laid out my instructions here. And the very first instruction that you're going to get for dress F is to actually go to dress D. So moving to dress D, the first thing we have to do is make the darts in our bodice front 12. So here's my piece 12. And I have two different darts to make here, one here and one here. And I've already marked all of these little dots. And now I'm just going to use a straight edge to plan out my darts. And I'm just using a water soluble pencil to do this. And it doesn't have to be really deep, just enough that you can see it when you're stitching it. And if you want, you can do both sides and then pin them together, or you can just do one side. So I'm going to pin my pieces together like this whenever I do my dart, and then whenever I sew, I'll just follow this line. So just make all your darts. Having to hold my fabric a little bit here because it moves around so easily. Alright, and then once I have my darts marked, I'm going to pin them together, matching the dots first. Alright, and I like to put my pins in before I actually pin the fabric, just in case I feel like it's going to lay differently, especially with a fabric that moves around this much. So I'll mark here the end of my dart. The center of my dart and the top. Now I'm going to mark all four of the darts like that and I'm going to pin all four of the darts like that and then I'll show you whenever I stitch them. So here's one of my pin darts, and I have my machine just on a regular stitch, and I'm just going to follow that line that I already made to make my dart. So stitch a little, back stitch, and then just follow your line. Then I'm just going to backstitch mine. You can backstitch, or if you're worried about points showing on your dress, you can always just finish them by tying them off in a knot. I actually like to do both. So I usually stitch my dart, backstitch at the last dot, and then also knot them. And I just knot them twice. Okay? So do that for all four of your darts.
This is what piece 12 looks like after you have sewn all of the darts. The next thing you need to do is take your iron and press your darts the way that they need to be pressed. So both of these are going to get pressed inwards like this and then these are going to be pressed downward. Here's what it looks like now that it's pressed. The next thing I'm going to do is actually trim off all of my extra threads here. And then looking ahead towards the next part in the pattern, you should have a lining piece that looks the same as this. And you are going to do the exact same thing for the lining that you just did for the right side of your nice fabric. So go ahead and do that for your lining. I'll show you what mine looks like before I start the next step. And then we'll move on. So here I have both my right side of the fabric and also my lining. Both of them have all four of the darts finished. They've all been pressed in the direction that they need to be pressed and I've trimmed off all of the extra threads. The next thing that you're going to do, moving on to step three, is pin right sides together. So these are the right sides together. And then you're going to pin the top together. So I would recommend that you match up your notches first. You pin your notches. And I'll have to do a little bit of fitting on mine because my right side of the fabric is a little bit stretchy. So I recommend that you pin the darts and then pin both of the ends together. So there's one end, here's the other. and then pin along the rest of the edge there, just filling in as you need. Depending on which fabrics you're using, you may need to do a little bit more fitting or a little less. And I'm going to be pinning my pieces quite a bit just because my fabric is moving around a whole lot. The right side of my fabric is moving a lot. And anytime you have these larger pieces, try to fit from the middle first and then ease in the rest as you need. Okay.
All right, and once you have this all pinned, you're going to take it to your sewing machine, and you're going to do a regular 5 8 inch stitch. Let me put one more here. So just check before you stitch that one more time, make sure you have right sides together. Now let's go stitch this. So here we go with just a regular 5 8 inch stitch. Stitch a little. Back stitch. And I, because my right side of my fabric is moving so much, I'm actually going to stitch right over my pins. And you can do a basting for this if you're having problems like, like I am with your fabrics. You can actually baste this and then stitch over it, it again if you want. If you have a squirmy fabric like this, sometimes it also helps to just keep lifting the foot a little bit so it's not pulling your fabric. And then back stitch that a little. Then you'll want to take out the pins and check to make sure that your fabric hasn't buckled anywhere that it shouldn't have. Or if your line looks weird somewhere and you want to restitch something that looks a little squirmy. And then just take your fingers and press it a little bit with your hand. So mine is actually looking all right. I think I'll go back over this section right here just because the line looks a little bit odd. And I want a nice smooth line. You can see how much my fabric moved. And then open out your fabric just to make sure that you don't have anything strange looking on the outside. Alright, mine's looking good, so I'm going to go press this seam open. You should also press this open and then come back and join me again. So now we're still on step three, but you need to finish up step three. And you need to trim out the seam that you just did. So I've already started trimming mine. You can see this is where I've cut off and you're just cutting off about half of your seam. So like this, just trimming half of what you have there. Be careful that you don't cut a hole in your fabric. And then we're going to go to our sewing machine and we're going to sew down our selvage to the lining and that is going to be our understitching. So, 
both of these seams are going to get pressed towards the lining. This is my lining. And then you're stitching all of that together on the right side. Okay, so here we go with the underlining. Just make sure that you do have both of those selvages down on the lining side. Stitch very close to your original seam line here. And then it's a good idea to fill underneath as you do this, just to make sure that you are still grabbing everything that you're supposed to. Make sure that as you're pulling your selvages underneath to make sure they're going in the right direction, don't pull the fabric too tightly. You don't want to add extra pressure to your seams. You just want to make sure that you're stitching everything down that you need to be. Constantly filling to make sure I'm grabbing everything I'm supposed to be. So when you get done with that, this is what you'll have. And if you flip it to the other side, you can see where both of the selvages are caught and stitched down to your lining. And that means that whenever you finish sewing your garment and you wear this, that underlining, excuse me, understitching is going to help keep this from turning out because you don't want anyone to see your lining. You just want the nice side of your fabric to show. So that is the purpose of doing that. After you've checked your understitching to make sure that everything looks good, you'll want to go to your ironing board and just gently press this down. So I've already pressed mine. And once you press that, you will finally have finished step four.